Back in the Word of God today, we're going to be continuing our series on preparing for the end days. But before we get started, let's ask for words of wisdom from our Heavenly Father in Yeshua Jesus Christ, the Messiah's precious, precious name. This will be part three in this series. Today we are going to identify the Antichrist, how he's going to come in, and what he's going to be doing. So let's get into this. Let's see what our Heavenly Father needs us to know. We're going to start off again in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. We're going to go down from, to, from verse 7 to verse 12. Let's get into this. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. So there is going to be a war in heaven. When our Heavenly Father gives the cue, there is going to be that war. Uh, Satan will be released. Remember, Michael is holding him right now, and there will be a war between Michael and his angels and Satan and his angels. When we say dragon, that's just another name for Satan. Remember, Satan and his fallen angels are losers. Verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that O serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. They're coming, folks. Satan is the Antichrist. He's going to come sitting in the holy place claiming to be God. And we're going to document that in just a few minutes. But you got to know that the Antichrist is coming, and we got to be prepared for these days that we are living in right now. Verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And accuser is just another name for Satan. And he does accuse us every time we fall short. He says, do you see what your child's doing down there? You see what they're doing? He is the accuser, but he is going to be cast down here on the earth. Verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of their lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. So when Satan is cast down here, sitting in the holy place, claiming to be God, he is the Antichrist, we will be brought up for a testimony. A testimony against a Satan and his fallen angels, but more importantly, a testimony of our living God. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So when we see... We, it talks about in Matthew chapter 24 when Jesus Christ is explaining the end days. And it's ex he says the sorrows, and that is like birth pains. Think about when a woman travaileth in labor, the closer she gets to delivery, the contractions get stronger, more intense, and closer together. As we watch prophecy being fulfilled on a daily basis, those sorrows are going to increase. The intensity of everything is going to increase but our heavenly father senses his word he expects us to read study and know what he has to say so we can be prepared for these end days now what's it going to be like when satan gets down here how's it going to play out we're going to go over to stick at thessalonians chapter 2 and we're going to go through this and i know this is repetition for a lot of people but for some it is the first time they've ever heard this so let's go over to second thessalonians chapter 2 Paul is writing this letter because he knows that people are confused about that first letter that he wrote. And in that first letter, explicitly, I'm going to um, talk about chapter 4, verse 17. That is where that rapture doctor, doctrine comes in. But he's going to explain ex right here exactly how it's going to come down. Let's listen to what Paul has to say. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Jesus Christ is returning here, and we will gather together to him. Verse 2, That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. And we know, as we are watching prophecy being fulfilled on a daily basis, Jesus Christ's return is getting closer, folks, but there's things that have to come down. And Paul's saying, I don't want you to be confused about that first letter. No spirits or any words spoken by man, because he's going to tell us exactly how it's going to come down. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. 
Now, the very first thing, which is also when Jesus Christ taught the end days, the very first thing is don't be deceived. The very first seal that we must have in our mind is Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. There's a rider coming on a white horse, conquering and to conquer. He's got a crown and he's got a bow. People are going to think that that is Jesus Christ. But that bow is the key word there. That bow in the Greek tongue is a toxon. It's the simplest of fabric. The first rider on the first horse coming in conquering to and conquer is a Satan. He is a cheap fabric imitation. So when we say except there come a falling away first. Now this is an apostasy. What is a an apostasy? That is a defection from the truth. I'm going to put these up here for you. That is people that have believed upon Jesus Christ their whole life, but they failed to get into the word of God and they were told they didn't have to. And they are deceived by the Antichrist who is going to come sitting in the holy place claiming to be God. Supernatural, beautiful, prosperously and peacefully as Daniel chapter 8 verse 23 through 25 says he will do. We have to be prepared for how he's going to come in to deceive God's children. When it talks about that man of sin be revealed. People are thrown by that. They think it's going to be a flesh human man. But remember Gabriel, who is um, he's an angel. And the word Gabriel means man of God. So don't let that word man there, man of sin, do deceive you. We're talking about Satan, the son of perdition. I'm going to put this up here as well. Perdition is Apollia. And that is perish, to perish. Satan is the only entity by name who has been called out for destruction. And you can find uh, evidence for that in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 18 and 19. So we're talking about Satan, the Antichrist, who's going to come sitting in the holy place. Let's read it in the next verse. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He's going to do it. It is written, and it's going to come down exactly as it is written. Verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. And Satan is going to be revealed. He is definitely going to be shown for who and what he truly is. Verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And we just read it. The one who is holding Satan right now, that old dragon called the serpent and devil, is Michael. Michael is holding Satan right now. When God gives that cue and that war begins, Satan's a loser, folks. He and his angels are going to be cast down here on the earth. Remember, woe unto those inhabitants of the earth, because Satan is going to come down to us, having knowing he has but a short time. Verse 8, And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Satan is going down. He has received his death sentence already. Verse 9, Even him whose coming is at the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders after the, after the working of Satan, because he is Satan. Remember when we talked about, uh, symbolically, when we're talking about a man who is a son to his father, he is a husband to his a wife, he is a father to his children. He's one person, but he's got different roles that he plays, just like Satan, the dragon, the serpent, that old devil, the Antichrist, son of perdition, man of sin, the lawless one, the wicked one, all those different names he goes by, titles he goes by, roles he plays, but he's one entity. Verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Many people do not want to hear the truth of God's word. They've gotten an easy way out. They're going to stick to that. They're going to bet their eternal soul on it. They will not listen to the truth. You know, let's read the next verse. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That is why we are responsible for taking the word to them one time. If they don't want to receive it, move on. There are people out there starving to death, spiritually starving to death to hear the word of God. We take that word of God out to whosoever will believe. Verse 12. That they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And think about it. When people are told over and over again, 
since a very young age that they don't have to read the Word of God. They don't have to study it. They're going to fly up out of here. Now think about it. We're going into the battle that will end all wars. Think about this. In a flesh war, when a soldier defects, he is, that is punishable by death. Think about spiritually, when a soldier defects, they, that is punishable by death. And who is death? That's another name for Satan. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, for documentation. Now, how are we going to be able to tell one from the other? How are we going to be able to tell, is this the real Christ or is it the Antichrist? Remember in the Greek tongue, anti means instead of. Satan has always wanted to be the Savior. He's always wanted to be Christ. But he's a liar and a loser. So when we see Satan sitting in the holy place claiming to be God, how will we know the difference? Because he's going to be beautiful. He's going to be supernatural. He's going to come in with all this prosperity and uh, prosperity religion on steroids is the way I like to think about it. And he's going to be saying, peace, 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 but there will be no peace until the Prince of Peace returns here. Now, how are we going to know the difference? He's going to be likened very much to Jesus Christ. And in whatever Savior a certain religion has, he's going to be claiming to be that Savior. So, <clears throat> excuse me, how do we know the difference? Listen to the words of Paul. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. Now remember, there are seven seals, seven trumps, seven vials. The seals are the information we must have in our mind about how things are going to come down in the end days. Matthew chapter 24, that first part of that play on that playlist will teach the seals. And Jesus Christ in Matthew 24 teaches exactly how things are going to come down. So go over and watch that if you missed it. But the seals are the information we must have in our brain about how things are going to come down. And then we have the trumpets. That means into action. We're moving. Things are happening. And then, of course, the vials is the wrath of God that is going to come down on the wicked. <clears throat> so when it says in a moment, that is not any moment. That is a time specified by our living God in a moment specified by God. And Jesus Christ will return here. And we hear it all the time. Any moment now, any moment now, D Jesus Christ is going to return. Well, that's just not the way it is. It's going to be when our Lord and Savior specifies that time for Jesus Christ to return. It's not going to happen before then. It's not going to happen, happen after then. It will be when the Lord specifies so it's not any moment, it's in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, that's number seven, folks. Jesus Christ returns at the seventh seal, seventh trump, and the seventh vial. The furthest one out. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. In that moment, when Jesus Christ returns, we're all, the good, the bad, and the ugly, are going to be changed over to our spiritual body. So, if somebody's sitting in the holy place claiming to be God and you're still in the flesh, you can pinch yourself if you feel it. That entity is a liar and a loser and claiming to be God. That is the Antichrist, the instead of Christ. Now, do we have anything to fear? Absolutely not. Now, we're going to go over to Luke chapter 10. Remember when Jesus Christ sent the 70 disciples out and they came back and they were so excited Let's pick it up at verse 17, and let's see what's going on here. Luke chapter 10, verse 17, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. The devils are subject to the disciples through the name of Jesus Christ. Don't look over that. It has to be in the name of Jesus Christ. We never want to go up against Satan, his fallen angels, his Kenites, on our own, we have to go up by the power given to us by our Lord and Savior. Let's read verse 18. And he said unto them, <clears throat> excuse me, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He is talking to the generation that we are in right now. He sees Satan falling from heaven. Just as we just read, Michael and his angels fought against Satan and the Satan 
And his angels fought against Michael, and they prevailed not, and they were kicked out down here on the earth. Woe unto us, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, Satan falling as lightning from heaven. Verse 19, Jesus Christ speaking, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, I want you to remember back in um, Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. When, and when we're talking about serpents, the Pharisees were coming and they were giving Jesus Christ a hard time. The Pharisees, the high and mighty people of the church who had our Savior murdered. These are Kenites. These are those people who claim to be of our brother Judah, but do lie and are of the synagogue of Satan, spoken in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9 and Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. These same type of people are with us today. These are children of the wicked one. Now, he called them out for who they were in uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. He called them out, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, of the, heart the mouth speaketh. Now, when you see generation of vipers, I'm going to put this up here. Generation, that's offspring. And vipers are serpents. They're snakes. So, O oh, you generation of vipers, you offspring of Satan himself. So, when you see those serpents that we are giving that um, power over, remember we're talking about Kenites. Now, also remember John the Baptist. John the Baptist, when he was uh, standing out and baptized, preaching by the Jordan and baptizing people there. And the Sadducees and the Pharisees came, and that is in Matthew chapter 3. He called them out, you generation of vipers, that is telling us you got to watch out for these people because they are pulling the strings today on the four hidden dynasties of education, finance, government. Y'all, they're in the churches as well. Let's go back over to Luke chapter 10, and we're going to... Read verse 19 again. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents, those are your Kenites, and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, when you hear scorpions, that should immediately um, make you think of Revelation chapter 9 when we're talking about the locust army. We're going to go over there and read it real quick. Revelation chapter 9, we're going to start at verse uh, one. Now, remember, we're going to be talking about the fifth trump, but the fifth trump is simply the information the testimony, if you will, of how things are going to come down in the sixth trump. So we're giving the information in the fifth about how it's going to come down in the sixth. So don't be confused about that. Let's read it. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. We're talking about the fall of Satan from heaven again. Now he's given this key to the bottomless pit. God is going to allow him to have that power. He is going to allow him to do what he is assigned to do. Now, he cannot go above and beyond those uh, powers that God have given, has given him. Why would the Lord give him that power? We're in a vetting process, folks. We are in the vetting process of all vetting processes. We're here to make a decision. Are we going to follow our Heavenly Father, His Word, or the ways of the world and Satan? Now, if we study and know what the Word of God has to say, we know how things are going to come down. We know who the Antichrist, we know who how he works. We have nothing, nothing to fear because we have been given that power in the name of Jesus Christ to send Satan, his fallen angels, his Kenites back where they belong in the name of Jesus Christ. Get thee hence, Satan, and take your little imps with you. Go back to the abyss in the name of Jesus Christ. Be practiced, be ready, because he's coming. The Antichrist is coming. But he is going to be given this power. Verse 2, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now, the sun and the moon darkened. Remember, when Jesus Christ returns here, the sun, the moon, air will be darkened as well because of his greatness, because of his glory. He is the light of the world. Now, but this entity who is opening the bottomless pit, remember that the flood of the end days is the smoke's fire and brimstone that is a flood, a flood of lies out of Satan and his crew, his army out of their mouths. 
but this smoke is going to darken the sun and the air. Don't be deceived. Verse 3, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, what? let's talk about this a minute. Now, they are going to be given power. What does a scorpion do to its prey? It's a little graphic, a little gross, but it gets it done. It tells us exactly what we're looking at. What a scorpion does, remember, a scorpion has this long tail on the back of it. When a scorpion strikes his prey, he paralyzes it. Now, a scorpion does not have a stomach, so he takes that paralyzed entity, prey, and he pulls it in with his pinchers. Then he injects his digestive juices into the prey, and the prey's skin becomes the scorpion's stomach, and he feeds off that mush, because the insides of the prey will be turned to absolute mush. Now, how do we talk about that in a realistic uh, point of view? How are they going to do this? They are going to come here, Satan and his army, are going to come here and paralyze people with lies and deception and fear. They're going to draw them into the fold, to their fold, with the, the pinchers. Think about that. And they're going to inject them with more lies, more deception, over and over again. And those people, those souls, will be turned to mush. And the Antichrist and his army are going to feed off that. They're going to feed off that. Let's keep reading. Verse 4, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. So you know this is not insects because that's what they thrive on. That's what they live off of, trees and grass and all the green things. This is Satan's army, the locust army. Now you can go into Joel um, chapter 2 and God calls this his great and mighty army because they got a job to do the negative part of God's plan must come into fruition for the days and for prophecy to be fulfilled verse 5 and to them was given that they should not hurt I'm sorry and to them it was given that they should not kill them but that they should be tormented five months and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strike at the man now we know that in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus Christ was teaching, and he says, And except those days should be shortened, there shall be no flesh saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So when we see that five months, we know that the time is down to a five-month period. And when he says uh, that they cannot kill those people, but they can torment them. Now, that's going to be the torment of that uh, of a scorpion that we just talked about. Verse 6, and those days, in, in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Why are they going to want to die? Because when they finally realize what they've done, when Jesus Christ returns here and they realize they have been following the Antichrist who is Satan, they're going to pray for death they're going to pray to die verse 7 and the shapes of the locusts were likened to horses prepared into battle and their heads were as a were and their heads were as it were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men why was it why were their faces the faces of men because they are men they're not insects we're talking about the locust army that's coming when you see these horses prepared unto battle, now remember in Ezekiel chapter 1 and also in Ezekiel chapter 10, but I'm going to stick with Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 4. When God came down to talk and speak with Ezekiel, he came with his throne. And we know that that word amber in that verse 4 is a highly polished bronze, uh, highly polished bronze spectrum metal. So he came with a vehicle. Now interdimensional travel I do not understand it all, but I know that the Lord came down in this vehicle. So when Satan and his fallen angels come and you see these vehicles increasing, you know, just be aware that that is how they will be traveling. Now, who is on, are these, when you see these vehicles, is, are they going to be good or bad? Well, it depends on who is in there, who's piloting those, those crafts. Verse eight, and they, 
had hair as of the and they had hair as the hair of woman and their teeth were the teeth of lions now their hair the hair of women they're going to talk very gently very sweetly they're going to be grinning ear to ear and just speaking beautiful words prosperity and peace but remember, there will be no peace until the Prince of Peace returns here. That is our Lord and Savior. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Now think about how a lion destroys his prey, ripping and tearing uh, his prey up. They will be doing that spiritually to souls. They will be ripping and tearing souls to pieces. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 9, And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there had tails unto, like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Again, the time of Satan and his fallen angels has been reduced down to five months. Verse 11, And they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Now, I'm going to put these up here. Abaddon and Apollyon, we're talking about this destroying angel. We're talking about Satan. He is the Antichrist. He's going to come, and he's going to come down to us. Are you prepared for him to be sitting in the holy place, claiming to be God and being supernatural, Coming in prosperously and peacefully, we have to know how the indexes are going to come down. Now, as many people hear constantly, and what on YouTube you see, oh, I had a dream. You know, when somebody teaches something that is not biblical, I don't care who they are. If it's not in the Word of God, and that's how you check any man, woman, teacher, preacher out, does what they say align with God's Word or not? Now, when we hear things... We have to go in, we have to study. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So when we go in, that is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. When we go in, we study, we check them out. So when someone tells you you don't have to read and study and know what the word of God has to say, you know, they have an agenda. Many of these people know what they're doing, but some do not. Some people do it in ignorance. I understand that. And a sin done in ignorance is not a sin. But those who purposely are doing this to harm God's children because they are working for the wicked one, keep that in mind. Satan's got a lot of workers here right now. Remember, we talked about the Kenites and how they work and how they pull the strings on education, finance, governments. Y'all, they're in the churches. They're in the churches to deceive God's children. Why in the world would they do this? Let's go over to Ezekiel. Chapter 13. Now, the whole uh, chapter 13 of Ezekiel is talking about false teachers, false preachers that lie to God's children. The whole chapter. Not preparing them, not getting them ready for battle. They're lying to them. Now, Ezekiel uh, means God strengthens. How does God strengthen us? Through his power, through his might, through his love, through his grace, through his mercy, through his love. Father, strengthens us so on our own we are nothing but through the blood of lamb we have been made worthy we've got a job to do now when we hear these things that the a lot of the secular churches are teaching god's children we have to understand where it's coming from false teachers false preachers let's read this ezekiel chapter 13 we're going to pick it up at verse 18 and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the women that sew pillows to all arm holes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every statue to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people, and will you save the souls of life, alive that come unto you? They can't save anybody. They cannot save anybody. Now this is talking about false teachers. Why are they, what are they doing? They're sewing arm holes, or living God's outstretched arms. They're covering his calling, his arms that are outstretched to his children. Why in the world would they do such a thing? And what is this soul hunt, hunting? Hunting souls. I heard a preacher say, 
Do whatever you got to do. He's a Paul's teacher. Do whatever you got to do short of sin, but get those people in here. He teaches false doctrine, folks. He's a secular teacher. That's hunting souls. Verse 19, And will you pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies? Remember, we got to have a love for the truth. we got to seek out the word of God. Now, why are they doing it? Handfuls of barley and pieces of bread. They do it for money. They are doing it for money. Verse 20. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. And I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that you hunt to make them fly. That's that flyaway doctrine. You think the Lord God Almighty didn't know that they were going to be teaching a bunch of lies to his children, telling them you don't have to read and study and know what his word has to say because we're flying up out of here? That is not biblical, folks. Father is against those who teach his children to fly to save their soul. But he says, I will tear them from your arms and let the souls go, even the souls that ye haunt to make them fly. What, what we are doing now, we are taking the word of God out to whosoever will believe as it is written. And guess what? When they hear the truth, they will flee. They will flee from the false teachers and preachers and then they will have concreted in their mind, sealed in their mind, the truth. The truth of God's word. Now, as we are watching prophecy being fulfilled on a daily basis, we got to stay close to our Heavenly Father. we got to pray for each other because things are coming down and we are watching prophecy being fulfilled on a daily basis. Our strength comes from our Heavenly Father. We are covered by the blood of the Lamb. And we know that the Holy Spirit will lead God and direct us through these days. And that's going to be it for today, guys. If you like today's teaching, like, share, and subscribe. And let's get the word out. I hope you have a great day and join us again.